God, I wish I'd had a camera. Get him looking down his nose, his head back. That, that, you know, that picture of him looking down his lows. We're here at the federal courthouse in Sacramento, Orly Tates. They, they argued no standing, uh, no jurisdiction, and they hadn't got the proof of service. Do you think that was a fatal flaw? No, no. They're just making up, uh, making up excuses every time. It's something new, and and that's what I called them on. Uh, I was saying that for four years we were told that because Obama was already elected, for four years it was too late, and they said you can bring those arguments during this next election. We brought uh, this uh, case. Uh, and several other cases during the election period, which was the time to challenge the president, and we were told, well, it's too early. He's not a candidate yet. He's not going to be a candidate until uh, September, when he's going to be confirmed by his nominating convention. So we waited again. We were told it's too early. And after convention, we were told it's too late. Oh, he's the president. He continues being president. So it is, it's, it's clear we have judges who are acting as puppets, who are following uh, the same uh, marching orders, uh, and uh, they're, they're typically um, repeating the same excuses in, in, in different courtrooms. We, we heard the same excuse in Florida just recently. Well, he is the president, uh, and that's it. Um, Federal complaint. And in terms of standing, they were saying that uh, regular citizens do not have standing. Mr. Greenhouse, who is a Republican, made sure that he became a presidential elector, so he would have standing. And when uh, the case was brought on his behalf, uh, somebody who has standing as a presidential elector, the judge wouldn't want to hear. I provided them with the evidence. There is one and a half million invalid voter registrations in California. The judge couldn't care less. Even in that case where you uh, challenged the guy running for secretary of state, Damon Dunn. Damon Dunn, and I found, in fact, there were forged signatures the Orange County Register did not want to hear about it. Exactly. it does this all seem rigged? Absolutely. You know, they're, they're just, uh, there are candidates who are official establishment candidates uh, who seem to be predetermined, hand-picked, cherry-picked by the establishment in advance. Any and all evidence of fraud, of corruption, of forgery, of treason just being swept under the rug by corrupt judges. That's what we're seeing. It's frightening. We're going by the way of Nazi Germany, of, by the way of uh, Communist Soviet Union, of jihadist Iran, of Nazi Germany. It's frightening. If today we lose our voting rights, our suffrage rights, we are seeing uh, our economic rights uh, being undermined. We're losing them because uh, the government is just spending uh, like there is no tomorrow, uh, like a drunken sailor, and then raising taxes on us to pay off for this orgy of spending, for, for sending billions to cronies. So we're losing our voting rights in rigged elections, then we're losing our economic rights. What's left? You know, if it continues, it, it, it really is going to be like Nazi Germany. We're going to lose our freedoms as well. That is why I believe that each and every citizen needs to rise to that. The judge uh, said, well, there were 13 cases where the judges ruled against you. And I said, well, in those cases, not one single judge saw the evidence. Even today, after five years, there were 45 attorneys, hundreds of pro se uh, plaintiffs that, uh, that brought, as far as I know, some 200 either challenges with election boards or, or lawsuits. And it's impossible to believe that all 45 uh, uh, attorneys didn't know what they're doing, that all of, the, uh, all of those uh, plaintiffs didn't know what they're doing. No, it's just a, a regime, a dictatorship. Uh, the, the ruling elite uh, decided that we have a convenient public who's going to be uh, in the White House. Any and all evidence of forgery, fraud, uh, stolen Social Security numbers just being swept under the rug. And uh, when the judge stated, well, there were other judges that ruled against you, I said, well, but not one single judge saw any valid documents, nothing. Nobody has seen the original birth certificate. Nobody has seen application for this Connecticut Social Security number that Obama is using that was never assigned to him. I said, you know, if Thurgood Marshall were to uh, be discouraged uh, by the fact that a number of judges ruled against him, we would have still had segregation. This judge would have never been allowed to be a federal judge. 
he, he, was, he was able to become a federal judge because there was somebody, there was an attorney who continued in spite of a number of judges who, who couldn't care less about justice at Warcraft. I mean, you had a packed house here. You had 55 people in the gallery, plus five people in the media taking notes, plus some court personnel and some outside lawyers sitting in the jury box watching this. Who do you think those outside lawyers were? Oh, they probably are attorneys for uh, Department of Justice, for U.S. Attorney's Office, and for the Office of the Attorney General of California. That's uh, all law clerks that are working uh, in this building, and most of them are very leftist, very, very much pro-Obama. I couldn't care less about the U.S. Constitution, couldn't care less about the rights of the U.S. citizens. So that's what is happening. And the judge was saying something that made absolutely no sense. He was stating, well, there is no requirement for the U.S. president to have a valid birth certificate. There is no requirement for the U.S. president to have a valid social security number. There is no requirement for him to have a valid selective service certificate. And I said, Your Honor, there is also no requirement for him to have a pulse to have a heartbeat or to have any brain activity. But, you know, when you use common sense, you would understand that somebody who becomes a U.S. president uh, hopefully has a pulse and hopefully has some brain activity. The, by the same token, if the Constitution says that the U.S. president has to be a natural-born citizen, it's logical, it's common sense to understand and believe that somebody who is a natural-born citizen is using a valid name, is using a valid social security number, valid selective yeah. service certificate, uh, a valid birth certificate. And, uh, you know, it shows the, the magnitude of corruption in the judiciary. Just uh, uh, the judges uh, just refuse, refuse to look at any evidence. We, we had a problem where I specifically asked a de deputy in writing, will the judge allow witnesses to testify? And we've been having problems in a number of courts well, we understand that witnesses are not allowed to testify. We don't bring witnesses. And then they're saying, well, you had, a, uh, you had a valid argument, but no evidence. When we bring witnesses and there is evidence, they're going back on their wor word and refusing to allow any evidence. So they're just coming up with excuses one after another. Is this what it was like under the bad old Soviet Union? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why in the Soviet Union, you know, People ended up uh, uh, revolting. It's not just Soviet Union. You, it's all over the uh, Eastern Bloc. People just started started revolting against the regime because they saw that uh, they were deprived of any and all rights. And that's what we're seeing here. One of the things that those kind of cases allow us to see is that we are deprived of any civil rights. And it's very sad. Are you going to appeal this ruling? Well, keep in mind, the, the judge did not dismiss the case. He only denied temporary restraining order. We can still proceed with this case. So when will be the next hearing on this case about Obama's right to be president? I believe what will happen is that they will file a, an answer because so far they only filed an answer to temporary restraining order. They will be filing an answer to actual complaint. And uh, well, there, there will be a hearing, I don't know. He might decide on, on paper, on, you know, based on the pleadings. On, I was at your original hearing on September 8th, I think it was 2009, and Judge Carter clearly said, and I saw his lips move, I know it was him, I was in the courtroom, he said this will be case will be decided by a federal jury in January of 2010. And then Gary Creep got it delayed for one month. I don't see Gary Creep here today. I don't see Gary Creep anywhere. And Judge Carter, he changes his law clerk to this, what's his name? And he used to work for the firm that represented Obama. Oh, still works there. And he still works there. And he gets to be temporary clerk for Judge O'Carter, and then Carter announces he's dismissing this case. I saw a federal judge do a 180 degree reversal in 30 days. And I still can't believe I saw it, but I was there. Now it's been four years later. We're, we're four years down the pike. Is revolution the answer? I mean, is armed revolt the, the, the answer? I hope not. You know, as an attorney, I cannot advocate an armed revolt. I cannot do it. Um, I'm just very concerned that we can't find justice. We still, after, what, five years, we still have not seen any uh, judge 
who would uh, allow a motion to compel production of records, any judge that would allow us to show evidence. And, you know, we have witnesses here. Ms. Barnett, uh, Pamela, Pamela. Ms. Barnett was an intelligence officer uh, for the U.S. military. She is here to testify. Say your name. Pamela Barnett. Your expertise, and what would you have told the court if they had allowed you to testify today? Well, I had obtained a Freedom of Information Act uh, passport application for Barack Obama's mother, and on that form uh, is uh, the name Sobarka. As, uh, he was using the name uh, Sobarka when he was uh, younger. And on this form, it actually has, I can show you. We're taking the, the courtroom evidence to the street since the court refuses to allow evidence in the court, which was the same case we saw in September of 2009 in front of uh, Judge, Federal Judge David uh, Carter at the Ronald Reagan Federal Courthouse in Orange County. And it's the same kind of thing that happened in Indiana and happened in other places. Judge Mayhew in Georgia did allow witnesses even though the president's attorney said they were not going to attend the hearing because the judge may he had denied the motion to dismiss. So then Obama's attorney just said, well, we're not going to participate in the court proceeding anymore. And in every case, they have a difficult time getting the court to put any evidence on. It's either too early or too late, as Orly Tate said in the courtroom. And I, I witnessed that today again. What did you have, Ms. Burnett? Okay. This is from a Freedom of Information Act request. Let's see. The State Department letterhead here. Okay, I see the State State Department letterhead. Yes. United States Department of State, Washington, D.C., December 10th, 2010, case number 2009-00535, segment PPT, Dear Ms. Barnett. It says, I refer to your request in the letter received January 2nd under Freedom of Information Act, Title V, USC 552 for a copy of documents, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And what they provided, I requested passport applications and also consular records. They totally ignored my request for consular records for his mother, which would have been birth overseas birth records. The, the State Department completely ignored that request. And I'm going to be suing a, a FOIA lawsuit for those records. Okay. But the records they did give give me is our passport records. and. Um, on this is a passport application for Stanley Ann Dunham Soatoro, Barack, Barack Obama's mother. And on it, it has to uh, amend to include uh, children. And on it, it has I'll show you. Barack Hussein Obama. And then in parentheses, it says Soe Barka, S O E B A R K A H in parentheses. And why is it crossed off? And the reason it's crossed off is because on the front page it says that if you've become naturalized in another country or if you perform military service in another country and there's a whole long list of other things it says to, to uh, do hash marks out cross out that person because that's signifying that they're no longer a US citizen. Right here. It says if any of the above mentioned acts have been performed by, by or apply to apply to the applicant any person included in the passport or documentation, the portion which applies should be struck out. And a supplementary and expl sub supplementary expl explanatory statement under oath or affirmation by the person by whom the, the portion is applicable should be attached and made part of the application. They never provided that to me either. But essentially what this is saying is that that uh, Barack He's Obama was no longer a U.S. citizen. And that at what that date? His mother under oath. His mother under oath said he's not a citizen. Right. And it's signed by a, Jak by a Jak Jakarta, Indonesia consular officer. And her name is, uh, I think, printed in there. Yeah, it's a little hard to see. There, 